Uh, well, I'm sorry to inform everybody. Hi, hey, we're here. Uh, Adam quit just now. He's out. Yeah. <laughs> so Bye. Gene is out of the story tonight. Um, out of out of home, out of ready to roll, and out of you know. Gosh darn. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> we're uh, we're out of luck. Um, hey everybody, welcome to Eldritch Noir tonight. Uh, we're really excited to be here. This is the finale. This is the last episode um and i don't think any of us really know what's gonna happen i don't know they don't know you guys don't know so like it's gonna be a fun time um in terms of pre-game announcements um we've got different strokes with different folks on monday and my guest this week is not patrick i love you patrick but it's not you this week <laughs> it is actually lovely ian here uh, as long as that oh. still works for you. Uh, we're going to be yeah. hanging out painting dragons. Both dragons. of us painting dragons. Dragons! I have to repaint a dragon, so that'd be fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it, that's on Monday night. And then Wednesday night is Rehash the Rolls, which is going to be Eldritch Noir specific. Uh, if you go into our Discord server, there is a form that you can fill out if you have any questions about Eldritch Noir. It's the entire five episodes. Any questions are good. Um, Adam is not going to be able to make it, but if you want to ask him questions, we'll try and get that to him before, and maybe he'll be able to give you answers if you really, really, really need to ask Gene-specific questions. Um, so don't don't miss out on that. It's going to be a really fun time, and we'll see how frazzled I am because I'm moving two days later. Um, any other announcements, Patrick? That might be it, as far as I know. Nope, that's all we've got so far. Yep. Alright. Cool. Well then we are gonna head into a little intro video and our episode of Eldritch Noir. <laughs> Right. Okay. Um, and Adam, you have our intro recap for tonight. Is a thing that I do have. <clears throat> Last time, the party, truly together for the first time, investigated the, ho the home of the late Ayanna Luttrell, Jean's former boss, until he brutally annihilated her. <clears throat> they liberated Captain Ellis's abducted eggs and looked through some of Ayanna's records. During the search, Ayana's phone rang. The caller was the personal secretary of Domovoy Premici, leader of the Regalier. Jean was invited to dinner with the Dom at the Fortuna Nera and told to bring a date. He chose the lovely Vivian to join him, acting on his stated promise to her, and feeling fairly comfortable with her apparent confidence stepping into the more murky realms outside the law. During the afternoon, in their preparations for the dinner, there were two tense moments. The first was Elhan, after finally managing to locate his fellow IA officer, Delilah Banks. She admitted to him that she was the source of the mysterious disease, overcoming users of the Luna Femage, not Fromage, it's not cheese. <laughs> In her frustration with the widespread corruption in Shade City, she manipulated Tercial Walters, stealing from him an ancient talisman of an oozed turned lich and cursing the Regalier's crop of Entenleaf. Elhan has not yet decided whether to turn her in or not, though Jean did voice his opinion with some veiled threats in regards to her fate. The second standoff occurred at Sev's office. While awkwardly flirting and conversing with Ava, they were interrupted by Jean's lackey, Edie, asking questions about Sev's request for helping construct a face for Ava. He was firm with Edie, but the encounter left Ava a bit uncertain. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the conclusion to Eldritch Noir. Yeah. Uh, tragic car accident. Everybody dies. The end. Uh, no. Thanks for coming. 
<laughs> Thanks. Um, we're gonna pick up, I believe most people were gonna meet up at Elhan's apartment. I don't remember exactly. It's been two weeks sure. since I haven't. Yeah. Um, I believe Jean is going to come and pick up Vivian in his fancy car. However, he acquired mm -hmm. one. Um, for your dinner. Um, so you other three are there. Uh, Delilah is also there. Um, kind of tagging along behind Elhan. She's very quiet. Um, and especially is avoiding eye contact with Vivian for most of the time that she is there. Um, however, before you guys set off to set yourselves up outside of the casino, she does come up to you, Vivian, and she's got a little black sort of elongated rectangular box in her hand. She reaches over to hand it to you. So this is something to contact us if something goes wrong. She opens up the box and inside there is a very beautiful little golden slender chain and on with one singular uh, pearl charm like on it. This is a uh, it has to be something small in case of you know, detective magics and stuff. The inside of this is actually coated in just a little bit of lead to disguise the magic of it. What you do is you break it and it will allow you to essentially cast the sending spell. It's the miniaturized version of the sending spell. You only get 10 words. You can send a message to anybody if you just break the pearl. It's like an emergency, like I'm dying, come save me emergency flare item that she gives to you. Vivian puts it on. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. I hope everything works out tonight. And she never, she never actually meets your, your eyes. It's just kind of looking off away from you the whole time. Are, are you feeling okay? I'm... I am... I'm alright. I am looking forward to making things right tonight, if possible. Alright. Hopefully everything should be fine. It should go well. Yeah. Let's hope so. Um... So is the is the thought like to just leave Vivian alone in the apartment waiting for Jean while the rest of you guys go off? Yeah, because we kind of need to arrive separately. Otherwise, it'd be really suspicious if Jean leaves and then we all follow him. So we need to arrive before uh, before Jean does, if possible. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, you are very much able to do that. So Vivian, you are left alone in Elhan's apartment for a Seb, while. Seb does before before he leaves, just goes up to Vivian, just be safe, okay? Just don't do anything. You'll have to. Um, you can uh, run if it gets crazy, but if, if you can't, you know, you're, you're good at fighting, so just fight. She pats Seb on the arm. Don't worry about it, Seb. I'm sure I'll be fine. We'll be there if anything goes wrong. We, we got it. We, we'll do this. Yes, you all seem very concerned. I think everything will probably be fine. I hope so. Alseb says. He pats Vivian on the head and walks away. All right. So the three of you law enforcement people, I wouldn't say officers because Seb's not an officer. He's not really in the force currently. Um, pile into... Elhan's car that he has borrowed. You head over to the casino. Um, you are able to meet up with a handful of SCPD officers. There are five of them. They didn't want to bring a ton of people, but Captain Ellis is there. 
as well as um, Benton and Rogers, the two people who initially um, bagged and tagged Jean, are there. And then just a couple other, like, not major... You're not extremely impressed with these people, Alhan, from what you know of them, but they're not huge, crazy wild cards or anything like that. They're probably gonna... mostly reliable. <laughs> Point at Betten and Rogers. Those two can go home. Uh, Alice kind of like cocks a snaky eyebrow. You don't want their help? What's nope. wrong with them? Just some stuff Jean said. If I remember correctly, last session Jean told me that they were in the uh, they were in the pocket. This is so true. I would like them to go home. They, I don't I don't trust them. It makes me question the rest of your choices here, Alice. I mean, if you want people that aren't in the pocket, you know, they're less in the pocket than the rest. That's fine. We can keep the other three. Ben and Rogers can go home. Uh, roll persuasion. Let's get these rolls going. That's going to be an 18. He kind of like rolls his eyes a little bit, turns over to the two. Ben and Rogers, you can head out and then he turns back to you Elhan if we die because we're sure handed that's on you okay if we die because we're short handed I don't think you'll be around to complain <laughs> just kind of nods and uh, turns how do you guys want to set yourselves up this so the casino is big and it is in like the center there's essentially like a traffic circle sort of roundabout going all the way around this very very large structure um it's like i mean it's essentially an entire city block size building um though there are only like two entrances one on either side and is it currently open like could we go in and act like we're playing probably yeah it's not a 24-hour establishment, but um, at this point, it is open, yes. I think stuff's going to turn to Elhan and go, you want to play some cards? What's the likelihood that a Warforged wouldn't look weird in that establishment? Um, so the Fortuna Nera is, like, in the more fair folk side of town. There are more, like, Bay-type people who are in this area, but it is like the major um, like casino and entertainment center of the city. Like there's not much that competes with it. So there are a lot of different people from around the city who, if they can afford it, come by and some people who can't afford it still do. So a Warforge just in general is a little bit weird um, and in like higher class establishments, a little bit more weird, but wouldn't be so freakishly um, he might draw some eyes, but not all eyes. It would, then, be, it would be an alert. Okay, then I don't have an issue with that particular plan. Um, I'd like other people to, some of the other officers to stay outside and like be patrol, like casually patrolling the outside perimeter. But uh, yeah, if I can get me, Sev, and at least Delilah inside, um, that would be ideal. Mm -hmm. Um, how are you dressed? Do well, you look like cops. <laughs> we would have we definitely would. Week. Yeah, we definitely would not have looked like cops because we did know that we were coming on a stakeout, so we wouldn't want to be looking okay. like cops. So, Sev, are you wearing your salmon suit then? <laughs> He's absolutely wearing the salmon suit. <laughs> Very subtle. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> Matching white shoes. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Underneath right. his jacket, though, he does have his weapons hidden. Okay. Yeah, I can leave them in the car, but it's going to be diff difficult if I need to run out and get them. Um, So Delilah has been to this place before, so she is kind of familiar with the inside and the setup and that sort of stuff. Uh, there are certain places in the casino where they would 
probably check you for weapons. <laughs> um, just like the first room and stuff, maybe not, but like further in, higher rolling tables, like that sort of thing, maybe they would. Um, but there's not like people frisking you as you walk in the front door. Not at all. Okay. So you walk in, the first room is big. It's very, very ornate. Uh, there's like big, uh, enchanted crystal chandeliers that like the color sort of changes um based on like the tone of the music that's playing like the weather it's it's very very um airy fairy atmosphere in here and as you walk through you can kind of feel a little bit of a lightening of your mood um you are aware this casino is sort of halfway between the prime material plane and the fey realm so there is a little bit of influence that the Fey Realm has just on your mood coming in. Um, and you imagine that probably helps people feel like they can spend a little bit more money here because they don't feel the pressure of their finances so much while they're in. Um, there is several features to this place. There's a very large like uh, dining and theater area where there's like dinner shows and that sort of thing. Uh, there's obviously the floor of the casino itself with all different card tables and different games of chance. Uh, there is in the center of the casino an enormous, like, garden. I wouldn't say Central Park style garden because Central Park is way, way, way bigger than this. Um, but large enough that there's like a couple little walkways. There's a big old pool in the middle. Um, lots of... There's like even little birds, little fey realm birds that kind of pop in and out of existence and are floating around in the trees in there. Um, so where would you like to set up? Very because I imagine that they're probably going to be <clears throat> back in the high rollers area. Um, so I would like to get, at least personally, I'd like to get to a table that's close enough that I can keep an eye on it, but not so far away that, I mean, not, not into the high rollers area so we don't get checked. Okay. Uh, yeah. I feel like that's fairly doable. Um, Though more of the like high rollers tables are like individual rooms that are kind of closed off, so it would be hard to see in them. Gotcha. Then would yeah. it be possible for us to mill around, hopefully without looking too suspiciously suspicious, to um, while we wait for Vivian and Jean to arrive, so we can see where they end up? Is there yeah. a good table that can see both of the entrances? I guess is a good no, way. this place is too large, and the garden is like in the middle, so it's it's hard, it's impossible to see both entrances from one spot. Um, but if you're just wanting to kind of blend in and not appear too um, obtrusive, I would say performance checks or deception checks. I don't know this, but Seb's not good at either one of those things. <laughs> I'm good. At both those things because of charisma spellcaster. Okay, 17. Okay, That's okay. gonna be a 16. And Delilah got a 27. Oof! Because <laughs> she is also a charisma caster, wouldn't you know? She rolled an 18, so. <laughs> Alright, so you guys effectively uh, are absorbed by. The crowds you very very uh effectively npc yourselves to just like walk around the space um all right so gene do you go pick up vivian I do. any any business or conversation you want to have in the car before you arrive um well before I arrive at the casino or before I arrive at to pick her up? Either or. There's something um, you need to do, Mr. Gangster Man. Well, I'd like to have bring Edie. And because I need a driver. And at this point, I don't really trust anybody else. I guess I'll bring 
add us in chat along as well. I was gonna say, you trust Edie to drive a car safely? That's a lot of trust there. <laughs> put, I'll put Addison Chad in the front, and then I have another woman with um, Vivian for comfortability and propriety's sake, I guess. And I will, on the way, I'll fill them in on, you know, what's going on. And, now, and I speaking in character. Now, my my three trusted companions and friends. If I don't come out of this alive, and you are able to, you are not hunted down like dogs, which might happen, as you know. Um, you may want to lie low and just do everything that you can to get back into good graces. Which, since I will be dead, I won't be able to care. But, if I do come out of this alive, then hopefully, I will come out with good news. So while I don't believe in it, wish me good luck. And it has been a pleasure working with the three of you. What kind of good news are you expecting? I don't know, I'm not expecting good news at all. You don't generally get personally invited. That either means that you're about to die, or you're about to get promoted. Okay. So hopefully the promotion. Alright. Addis and Chad are, you know, they're not the brainiest dudes. They're just kind of like, oh, okay, alright. But. As long as they can drive. <laughs> yeah, so Vivian, this long black car pulls up. I don't know if it's a limo or what. You've got four people in this car. <laughs> nah, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> so Vivian, this car pulls up. There's four gangsters inside. Um, <laughs> you've got to, I don't know, sit in between them. I'm not sure exactly the setup that you want inside this car. But it's a little, little crowded, a little bit uncomfortable, especially with the two Seder brothers who are like stuffed into uh, <laughs> shirts that don't fit them and look really awful on them as they tried to wear like dress pants that aren't made for Seder legs. Um, Cause apparently Edie tried to make them look presentable <laughs> with whatever she had on hand. Um, and you guys set off. Vivian? I apologize for my company, and I offer you my arm. No worries. So yeah, oh, there's necessary precautions. The car is a little more crowded than I thought it would be. Well, perhaps after this, if we make it out in one piece, I can take you on an actual enjoyable evening. Are you expecting a lot of trouble? Uh, I believe in hoping for the best and expecting the worst. Uh -huh. You don't usually get called in by the top dog for... It's either really good or really bad. Maybe he's very impressed with your work. I certainly hope so. It, not my work, and hopefully he's impressed by my choice of companion. I'm sure he will be. Everyone seems very concerned. I don't think it's going to be that big of a problem tonight. I appreciate your optimism. It's a breath of fresh air, especially with the uh, two in the front of the vehicle. I do have to ask, though. Seeing as how the first time we met, you ran away from a sludge monster and then proceeded to set the building on fire while we were still in the basement, that's not going to happen again, right? Probably not. Lighting the building on fire was the last resort to escape a sludge monster. Aha. Uh -huh. Because Surely. if trouble... If trouble does happen, well, I'm sure that Elhan and Sev will try to make sure I'm okay. If you run away, I will be very disappointed in you. 
guarantee you, I want them to be by it. Very good. Great. You guys travel through the city in slightly cramped style and arrive uh, at the Fortuna Nera. Um, you'd have a valet take your car, put it somewhere, or you can just entrust it to your dubious buds, the Seder brothers. Do you want that? Do you want your three people to come inside with you? What are your plans for them? So, they. I will have a valet take my car, as is expected, and then they shall be like my entourage. Um. And as we get when we get to the point where they're very clearly like you know like guards that are gonna stop us, then you know they'll go off and do their own thing um i'm gonna leave them with instructions to see if they can find you know like seven elhan and them that way if things go bad then they can help me join up with my strange bedfellows okay me, and i guess i should say i'm not used to having a companion from the party i've spent you know three or five sessions on my own yeah all right let's see if you your uh your people can find them <laughs> uh okay Edie might be able to yeah Edie's Looking able to find them for sure big bright salmon suit <laughs> that is uh that is a good giveaway yes um, so you walk in the front room and you can, there's like a receptionist kind of person at the front to, you know, welcome people, direct them to where they need to be. Um, this little, uh, half elf dude, uh, high elf, half elf, uh, sitting behind this little desk, little concierge guy. And when you check in, He's, he kind of looks to the rest of your group, your extra three people. Uh, looks down at his paper that he's got in front of him. Um, It's appearances, you see. They won't be joining us. Right. Okay. Uh, he uh, reaches under the table. There's like a little chime that he presses. Someone comes walking across the room to take his place and he's gonna lead you and Vivian over into like the dinner theater space uh the dom is not here yet but the other guests have arrived you'll be at a private table with him I do have to ask if you have any weaponry on you if you have any sort of things that we need to be concerned about as is probably expected, I always have weaponry on me. However, mm -hmm. it's to also be expected, more than likely you're going to take it from me as is proper. You know, the Don doesn't really care all that much, because if you do try something, there's a lot of people that will handle you. Are you implying I would try something? Are you insulting me? Insults and aspersions are pointless. This is a place that has been running for a very long time. We've had a lot of different experiences. Stains are really hard to get out of the carpet. Please don't be another one. Young man, how old are you? I'm 42. I'm 200. I'm aware. Thank you, however, for your, uh, concern. Now then, be off with you. Alright, he uh, brings you guys over. There is, like, a little somewhat private alcove that still faces this nice, like, semicircle stage up on one end of the room. Um, there are already two people sitting at the table. Uh, one of them you do not know. Some young, uh, 
human woman in a bright pink dress with this huge poofy like pink feather boa up around her shoulders. Uh, the other figure you do recognize is Belby in this tight like green uh, suit with like purple dyed leather around like the edge of the lapels and things like that. Um, there is uh, no one else at the table, just the two of them. Livian, I guess we need to go introduce ourselves. However, this is my current arch nemesis, so be cautious. All right, lead the way. I'm gonna approach, um, you know, being the gentleman gangster that I am. Ah, Bilby, it is a unpleasant surprise to see you here. So Belby actually had like his feet up on the table and as you approach and he notices you, he kind of starts, sits up in his chair. Why, Mr. Glass, it's, um, it's good to see you, I suppose. Didn't know you would be joining us tonight. I was unaware that I was going to be joining you this evening up until not too terribly long ago myself. I, uh, guess that the honor is mine. Tell me, um, and I kind of gesture to suit his appearance. Are you about to start telling me some riddles? I, I don't understand what you're implying. Adam is breaking the fourth wall and calling him the Riddler. <laughs> uh, never mind. And who is your lovely guest? Uh, she uh, kind of looks over, like flips her little golden curls that she's got. I, my name is Betsy, Betsy Wendell. I am, uh, I, I just met Miss, Mr. Belby just a few days ago. He's very, very nice, very uh, generous. And he asked me to come and I'm very excited. I haven't been in a place like this before. She seems oh, like nice. a very uh, airheaded young lady. <laughs> what was her name, Betsy? Betsy, Betsy Wendell, for some reason my brain <laughs> said Wendell. Wendy. Ah, Betsy, how do you do? I am doing really wonderful, how are you? She reaches her hand over to you. She's got these bright pink satin, like Miss Piggy gloves that go like halfway up her arm. I will take her, her, take her hand and do the, uh, you know, the appropriate gentlemanly thing. Mm -hmm. And I will, uh, this, it, Vivian, what's your last name? Baker. This is Vivian Baker. She is my uh, lovely companion for this evening. You should hear her singing voice. Absolutely angelic. Oh, and thank you. It's nice to meet you, Betsy. Charmed, I'm sure. Just so excited to be here. It's such a beautiful place. All sorts of fancy uh, company. How did you meet Belby? Well, I mean, I got a phone call and it was him. I have I have put some personal ads in the classifieds in the last few months and I guess he saw them. Oh, what? an ad for what? Uh, <laughs> Belby kind of coughs and just like, you know, just that sort of thing. She was wanting a friend. I'm gonna lean over to Belby and be like, and whisper and be like, you don't have enough game to find that out on yourself. You gotta he, make a phone call, I see. He uh, shoots you a glare. I mean, at least I can find one that's fairly, you know, classy of some sort. Uh, How many you had to call you consider classy? At that point, uh, there is uh, a pair of be-suited, dark-suited men that um, one is a winter Eladrin and the other is uh, a an elf. They uh, walk up to the table, just kind of like glance around. Uh, the dawn will be arriving shortly. Please, uh, 
be seated and have a good time and be aware that there are many people watching. Um, <laughs> sorry, I could just hear myself in the, in the other room. Um, and then they walk off, these two guys. And Belby kind of sits up straighter, kind of gives you like a very childish, like sticks his tongue out at you. <laughs> um, and then you see uh, a pair of sprites um one uh a sort of older middle-aged man uh in a dark suit lightly graying hair um and a female sprite on his arm they're flying on over to you guys uh very like elegantly in this the female sprite she's wearing a deep blue dress uh, there is actually at the table like a secondary table set up on one corner with like very small chairs <laughs> for them. Like the Zootopia little rat like thing kind of style. Yeah, yeah, a little table. And as they arrive, the the male sprite kind of looks around to the four of you. I see that you have arrived safely. I'm very pleased to see you all. Welcome to my establishment. This is my wife, Elaine. And she kind of does a little bow, a little curtsy to you all. It's very nice to meet you. And they are seated at their little table. Which side of the table am I seated? Are Vivian and I seated on? So it's it's a slightly interesting setup. It is a square table. Um, the Dom and his wife are on like a corner, and then there's spots like on either side of them for each of you pairs. Are we on the right side or the left side? Um, you the are right on the right hand and the left hand. <laughs> You are on the left hand because you got there a little bit later than Belby. That's on. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. So uh, you guys are seated. Um, and there's not like people taking orders or anything. They just start coming out with different appetizers. There's like salad, things like that. Um, nice like elven bread very fancy high class stuff um i'm not so good with the food descriptions as other dms it's food <laughs> um yeah you begin having this dinner it's quiet for a little while you notice that the dom is kind of just like looking each of you over in silence for a while maybe waiting to see a bit about you before he starts talking more but Elaine uh, it immediately starts uh, commenting on <laughs> on Betsy's dress, asking her where she got it. <laughs> Betsy just kind of goes off on like searching around downtown, looking at windows. I guess Belby gave her a whole bunch of cash to find something nice. Uh, but after after a little while of Betsy rambling on and on, Elaine turns to you, Vivian, because you guys are on the same side as her. Um, it's like, you you look very wonderful, Miss Baker. Although I do believe I've seen that dress somewhere before. Maybe it's just a familiar style. It is quite popular right now. It is. Um, so... If you don't mind my asking, how did you meet uh, Mr. Jean here? I met him when he showed up at a place that I used to work. Oh yeah, what's that? Where where's that? The Silverleaf. Oh, you used to work at the Silverleaf. Yes, it's not in business at the moment. No, I am aware of that. 
me and my husband have had several conversations about that place. What did you used to do there? I was the hat check girl, although I had recently been given the opportunity to entertain in one of the smaller rooms. Oh, you're an entertainer. What kind of uh, performances do you do? Mostly singing and playing the piano. Oh, that's lovely. How much experience do you have with this sort of thing? Sadly, only a little bit. Hmm. Something you've taken up only recently? Oh no, I've been practicing for years. It's just quite difficult in this city to get the opportunity to break into the business. Right, that is very true. Thankfully, well, I guess unfortunately for you, many of the more longer-lived uh, races have more time to patiently wait to break into the business. You find that it's much more of the the elves and the gnomes and the other more centurion level people that are able to do that and wait it out. It's a bit harder for more short-lived people, I'm afraid. Exactly. And while they do have a very high level of skill due to their long life, I tend to find that they sometimes get a little stale. Sometimes something fresh and new is needed. Hmm. Oh, then maybe we'll have to hear you play something, maybe once dinner is over. There is, um, um, at the moment, there is a, like, very teeny pixie woman playing a very teeny pixie-sized piano <laughs> with, like, a little microphone set up right next to it to play over everyone's dinner experience. Um, you definitely think you could play better than this person who is playing, though. <laughs> she sounds adorable, though. Um, uh, so, after a little while of just, like, very light conversation from Elaine just asking just you two girls, like, very surface-level questions, um, the Dom kind of sits up <sighs> so I imagine you two gentlemen are curious about why I asked you to dinner tonight yes sir it has come to my attention that there is a bit of a conflict going on I've heard of the unfortunate passing of one of my favorite lieutenants that has been working with me for many long years and that there is a bit of a contest to see who gets her leftovers yes pretty standard practice now it has been a long time since i've lost one of my higher employees and i don't appreciate too much conflict conflict is like a fire just enough is wonderful it keeps you warm keeps things interesting dancing flames are a beautiful sight too much and it begins to damage property and become injurious to my industry so ah but if you would ex please forgive the interruption war is good for business but not if the war is inside the business itself outside war is fine possibly supply goes down demand goes up prices raise mm-hmm but if the outside is still expecting the same level of supply from us, competition on the inside does not uh, benefit that. Now, I am not opposed to you to having your little competition, your little spats. It's fine. I do want a resolution to this as much as you. 
but I want to let you know that I have my limits. He kind of turns over to Belby. Hey, Belby, would you take your lovely lady and just, you know, go on a walk through the garden real fast? Belby glares over it at you, Jean. Sure. Uh, I, come on, Betsy. And he, like, grabs her by the hand. He is much shorter than her. Quicklings are, like, halfling size. And she is an actually fairly tall woman. <laughs> she is nearly twice his height. Um, and he, like, grabs her by the hand and pulls her out of the space. Um, Elhan, the rest of you guys are... You're not familiar with Belby exactly, but I imagine you've been given some kind of a description of him. And you guys, kind of, like, wandering through the entire space, do see the two of them, uh, as they walk out of the, like, dinner and dining, like, theater space. Then I want to... I want to get the attention of Seven Delilah so we can make our way over there and be close to there in mm -hmm. case things go wrong. If they close haven't already. To the... The dinner and dinner dining area. Okay. All right. Except does it at Alhango? That's not a good sign, is it? Uh, I'd imagine not. But I don't know. I don't know how exactly the mob works. Okay. Sev is worried and is heading over to the entrance. Uh, Delilah is looking over kind of towards the garden where uh, Belby and Betsy have gone. Um, she's got a little bit of a concerned look on her face, but she does not speak up at this moment. Um, what What's up, Delilah? It's you. You don't. You look worried. I mean, the last time I was here was when I was, you know, doing things that maybe I oughtn't to. Was the garden how you got in? No, no. I mean, Tercille just came in, thought it was a date. It, it wasn't. But the garden is where the item is. Oh. Hey, Sev, you okay watching the watching the entrance for a little bit? Stay on it, buddy. It, before Sev goes, he goes, hey, just in case it gets bad, um, I met you. And he puts his hand out, shake his hand. And I'm going to shake Sev's hand and say, likewise, my friend, you have, you are a, you're an interesting fellow. And uh, no matter what Gene says, you're a... Uh, you're a good example of of a warforged and why you all, you know, deserved the sentience that you got. I mean, he can't tear up, but he looks like he would be. His grip isn't too hard or too soft this time either. <laughs> Perfect. Got that handshake down pat. Keep that up and you'll be fine. Pats him on the shoulder. Sev pats him on the shoulder and then walks towards the entrance. Okay. And then I want to reach my arm out to Delilah like I'm taking her on a date and go to the garden. All right. Looking for anything in Looking particular? Are you following Belby and Betsy? Well, I mean, I'd like to attempt to, you know, remove the item if possible, unless Delilah tells me it's currently not possible, but <laughs> due to magic or other reasons, but. Yes, yeah, so. She leads you to, uh, like, off down some of the paths and things. There is, like, it's it's kind of wild in here. Like, it doesn't, it appears uncultivated while also being extremely picturesque and not overgrown. Um, And so she takes you over to, there's, like, this big weeping willow with, like, shimmering blue and green leaves. And underneath it, there are a lot of, like, purple flowers with these star-shaped leaves. And she kind of indicates towards the tree. It's under one of the roots over there. 
there are people around. Some of okay. the, two of these people are Belby and Betsy. <laughs> then I guess Elhan is just gonna hang out until less people are around. All right. Um, while you're waiting for that, we'll go back to the dinner table. Um, the Dom turns towards Eugene. So, Jean, I like you. I've heard good things about you, though I understand we have not met. Iona did mention you to me a couple of times in appreciation for the things you had been doing for her. Belby is an idiot, as I'm sure you're aware. Yes. Yes, I am. So, in this contest between you, I do have the horse that I bet on. However, I am not able to back you at this time. Any particular reason that you're able to share? You are the man in charge. Uh, make an insight check for me. And Vivian, if you want to as well, you can. Uh, 16. Okay. Lugene, so when you say that he is the man in charge, you see a little like like his shoulders kind of stiffen a little bit. Um and there's like a little flare of something in his eyes. You're not entirely sure exactly what it is, but he does react to that statement. I see. Well Go ahead. Not quite as sure-footed as we used to be. In what sense are you referring? Well, you, uh, reacted to that statement. I assure you, if there's anything that I could do to help whatever problem you seem to be having. I assure you, Mr. Gwise, I am entirely capable of handling things myself of i appreciate course, your yeah. concern but any problems that i have are things that i can handle myself you definitely feel like you touched a nerve but there is some deflection happening i have as you know belby is somewhat distantly related to me and he and I share a common friend and as such I cannot uh, order him around the way that I would usually may I ask who the friend is? you may not you see there's like how would I describe this? He's a very small man. So it's a little bit harder to read his small, tiny face. Um, but there is like some sort of flare of something in his eyes, like a little bit of like a greenish light. Um, and he his posture changes in that moment he sits up very straight i trust that you have good intentions and that you are willing to work with me should you become uh my next lieutenant of course 
And with your, maybe not permission, but if you were to look the other way, eliminating Belby would be fairly easy. And I wouldn't necessarily have to ship him off to the other side. If I could figure something else out. His voice has kind of changed at this point. It's very, very slight, but you are able to perceive his voice has become a lot less um, suave and a little bit less, uh, even less emotional than it was. That is not something that I can condone or encourage. But I trust that you know what you're doing. And should you uh, should you prove yourself, we can work closer together. If, if again, forgive me if I'm overstepping, but you have your you have indicated to me, and perhaps I'm getting this wrong, that you would prefer for me to win in this contest of champions, so to speak. And yet, I I get I have no support. I have no. You have, you're not able to turn and look the other way. How then do you intend for me to, uh, to succeed? Because quite frankly, there are many in our organization who will back him simply because he is part of the family and I am not. I would hope that you're resourceful enough to figure that out. As I've said, he's a bit of an idiot. He doesn't know what he has, and therefore he will probably squander it. If you wish, I could put you in contact with someone, a mutual friend, who could maybe give you an edge and some enlightenment. That would be marvelous, thank you. He looks over at his wife, and there is a flash of something that go that passes between them and their expressions. And Elaine kind of sighs, puts her hand on the back of his hand, squeezes it. If I could have you two, please accompany me then. Very well, uh, Vivian. Well, I guess I I should ask this first. If you would like her to be involved in this, she seems a little bit more savvy than uh, Belby's friend. Yes, well, I have actually met and interacted with Ms. Vivian. Um, Belby called Miss Betsy. Yes, I am aware. It's not a very good image. I am aware. The choice is up to you, Vivian. If, if you remain here, then more than likely we can keep you out of some of the shadier aspects and you will have plausible deniability for anything that may happen in the future. I... I'm certain that our hosts would love to hear you perform and may be able to find you a future and that you desire. But if you choose to come with us, that plausible deniability is gone. However, there's quite a bit more opportunity for fame, fortune, and glory if you're not afraid to get your hands a little dirty. You may disappoint Elhan, but let's be fair. Elhan is currently on the losing side. I really don't understand what Elhan has to do with any of this. I'm here with you now, Jean. And she puts her arm through your arm. And I trust you. Lean on. Very well. I'm glad that you chose, chose the better of two men. Totally 
didn't realize what I just said, and so now I'm got to play it off like Vivian is like cheating on Elon. <laughs> All right, so uh, Elaine kind of flutters alongside you and leads you out of the dining area. Sev, you see them leaving in your position in your brightly colored suit across the hall. <laughs> and they walk towards uh, the garden in the center of the casino. Sev is stressed. Uh, he's going to wait for them to get out of eyesight, but kind of follow into the garden. Mm -hmm. um, as they kind of enter the space, Elaine uh, kind of, she messes with a little ring on her finger. Jean, you recognize a similar action that Ayana had done uh, the day or two before. Um, and you see, uh, you know, several dark suited figures uh going up to different uh revelers in the garden and escorting them out of the space they are clearing out this garden of witnesses <laughs> so elham you all you and delilah also see this begin to happen people being asked to leave you have not been approached yet. I'm going to ask Delilah how long it takes her, how long do you think it'll take her to extract the item? I mean, only a couple minutes. I remember where I put it, but it's it's buried, you know, a good foot down. Sorry, I need to look at my spell list real quick. <laughs> we attempt to hide. I'd like to attempt to mm -hmm. hide and not okay. be seen. All right. Where generally would you like to hide? Well, I know that you say it's so obviously it's not overgrown, but I imagine that in a place that's meant to look wild, that there would be plenty of places that we could try to hide in the foliage and bushes and things like that. Okay. Uh, you can both roll stealth checks. Try and hide. Kanye, oh little my Miss God. Potter, don't fail me now. <laughs> I did just get in that 20 on a little Miss Potter die just now for Delilah. I, I got a 21. Not natural. Delilah has disadvantage on stealth. Okay, that's still decent. What was yours? I got a 21. Okay. Great. Um, you do effectively hide the two of you. The, okay. the agents of the Dom are not really expecting people to be hiding in the bushes. Um, especially dressed as most people are in this space. Uh, that's a little bit uncomfortable. Um, so you are passed over. Um, but so you see the space being cleared out and you do see uh, Jean and Vivian accompanied by this very small, uh, elegantly dressed sprite woman passing to the center of the garden. Um, and I do believe they. Curious. Yeah. I was gonna say I'm curious what Sev is doing to see if how Sev is keeping up with all of this. Yeah. What are you doing, Sev? You see people start That's leaving the garden well, space. I just sneak in. Okay. Uh, make a, bushes. Make, make a stealth check then. <laughs> I wish you luck, Mister Seven Foot Tall Metal Man. In a salmon pink That's suit. Funny. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right. Uh, what is the what is the full number? <laughs> A full number twenty two. Okay. Yeah, you're uh, somehow <laughs> brightly colored and very large as you are. You are able to kind of like slip around. Um, as there's like one uh group of people, kind of gathered around this very drunken 
gentleman who is very upset at being disturbed um, in his nighttime walk through this wonderful enchanted garden. And you're able to just kind of like bypass them like a salmon swimming upstream, just right on up and over and get lost amidst the, the greens and blues of this garden. Um, you're standing behind this like one random salmon colored giant <laughs> pitcher's plant thing. Just <laughs> like pretends to be a, my favorite. a it has pink to be cactus. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Do you uh, attempt to find to seek out anybody? What are you? Where are you going? He's just gonna try to follow, like follow the path of people leaving to see if he can't find Jean and uh, okay. Vivian. Yes, you are able to. Um, like I said, this garden is fairly large, but it's not huge. Um, so you're able to fairly quickly find them because there is a little bit of conversation happening. Um, as Elaine toward, turns back towards the two of you and you're all able to hear this. Uh, because I imagine Elhan and Delilah are close enough as well to hear this. Now, I have to ask you again if you're sure about this, because once you pass this, there is no turning back. Are you able to share a little, a few more details? If I'm selling my soul to the, uh, Archduke of Hell, I'm not convinced I'm ready for that step in life. Maybe come back to me in a hundred years. <laughs> I can assure you, your soul is not at stake. If you do I mean... want a bit of help with your situation and your future, there is an exchange. What would that exchange be? Well, you need some help. Our mutual friend will sometimes ask for help. How often? Is it a one for one or is it our mutual friend does one and I do however many till the day I die? You see a, a little flash of that greenish light kind of crop up in her eyes for a second. And her posture straightens and her voice loses a little bit of the nuance and emotion that it had before. It is a fair deal. Something that will benefit you both. But it is not a small deal. Can I make an insight check to see if it's really fair or not? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I got a 21. 19 plus 2. So you're kind of getting the feeling at this point that there's... a little bit of lack of agency involved? A little bit? That maybe she has a difference of opinion than what she is saying. Uh... May I speak with my lovely companion here and have a moment to deliberate this is all very unexpected but very generous i know that this is very improper to deny a gift from the from the dom and his lovely wife but this is also sudden i i expected simply a business proposition something more what i'm used to well you're moving into realms that you haven't been in before yes Talk for a couple I'm minutes I'll be waiting. She flies over. There's like a sundial like on a pedestal by the pool and she goes and like stands on that to wait for you. She's like 25, 30 feet away. <laughs> and I offer Vivian my arm. Would you care for a stroll? Sure. Uh, as we begin to stroll along the well manicured gardens, I'm gonna ask, have you noticed the uh the little green flash and the 
sudden lightning bolt through their spines. Do they not normally have good posture? Um, there's a difference between posture and looking like you're nailed to a wooden board. Ah, uh, I must just be distracted because I haven't been here before. Yes, there is something that is not quite right going on here. And I fear that the Dom is no longer in charge. While I admit that this offer is tempting, I don't think that you and I would really make it out of this as you and I. How, how is that a tempting offer then? Well, it would seem to me that they have a little bit of free will up until they approach onto something that whoever, whatever is controlling them, doesn't want them to reveal or do. In our line of work, since we have a tendency to do whatever we want, I'm certain that there is a large amount of freedom up until there is none. Kind of like getting arrested. I see. I'm going to rely on your judgment in this area. What do you think we should do? I think we should warn the detective. I will say, as you guys are walking through the garden and having this conversation, it is very possible that you are passing fairly near to the other three people secreted inside <laughs> this space. Just walk past this giant wolf, we're just like... <laughs> Like, like Drax style, just like, if I don't move, they can't see me. He's just I a statue in the garden. Entirely still. <laughs> I was serious when I said, if you, what the things that I accidentally babbled out in front of the Dom, you can have your wildest dreams fulfilled at the cost of, honestly, your soul. To be honest, and I don't know why I'm telling you this, perhaps it's because it's more than likely the eve of my demise. I wasn't always a nefarious and scheming and evil, heartless elf. At one point, I was bright-eyed and wondrous and a believer in good just like our friend the detective and I once didn't have the prejudices that I used to but two centuries of experience and pain and misery have changed me into doing something else watching is this city has descended into madness and darkness, and unlike Detective Anderson, who chose to try and make a difference, I chose to simply stay alive. And it has worked out well for me, but I have seen many people that it has not worked out for. The reason why I detest Sev is kind of killed some of my closest friends when they were simply mindless war machines. I used to love and care, and now that's a luxury that I can't afford. It's unfortunate, but as long as you're still alive, you can change your life in whatever direction you want. That's true. Well, I think we should warn the detective and then take her up on her offer. Perhaps there's some way to turn this situation to our advantage. To be honest with you, it would seem that the Dom is currently quite vulnerable and jumping from lieutenant to commander-in-chief in one night is very attractive to me. Not nearly as attractive as you are, of course. Yeah. I'm cast sending to Jean. Can he actually hear me? I mean, you are wandering around in the same space as him, I would imagine, very possibly. Um, let's just roll 
Sev, roll a luck check. Just like happenstance of how close he is. I'm gonna say eight or higher is totally fine. Okay. Up ten. Okay. Yeah, you're able to hear this conversation. Sev sends a message. Sorry, I really am. Have your back. That's all that he says. Suddenly, I feel quite a bit more confident, Vivian. Let's... Let's take the next step in our adventure. Lead the way. We will return to Elaine. Alright. Um, I'm also going to have Elhan roll a luck check to see how much of the conversation he has heard. But I got a 10. Okay. <laughs> so you are also aware of what's going on. Very much so. So, you two that are hiding, what are your current uh, plans and actions? I think Seb's going to try to continue to be stealthy and follow as close as he can. Okay. And keep them within his eye, within his eye, set of line. Line save. Right. All right, Alhan. I'm just gonna wait till they do what they gotta do. My primary goal is to get that item out of here. I could care less about what else is going on. Okay. Um. So from where you are, you are able to observe the. The pool it is like the central feature of um this space um all right so jean and vivian you return to elaine she looks up at you so you have a decision i do vivian have you made yours i'll go where you go we will follow you. All right. Wonderful. Um, she reaches down and like presses a couple of the symbols on the sundial. And there is this deep reverberating like noise that comes from the center of the pool. There is, in the center, there is this, like, fountain of, um, it's, like, spiraling, like, vines and flowers, and from each of the center of the flowers, there is a stream of water. And it becomes, the stone appears to become flexible and, like, begin to undulate and turn, and the vines and flowers separate and open up, and... There is a flash and the illusion that covered this space is removed. And all of you are able to see the pool is not this crystal clear, beautiful water. It is a deep, sickly green. Um, and there is a little bit of oppressive um heat coming off of it almost not like really really hot but you can you kind of get the feeling that the water is not like nice and cool it is warm and tepid um and the fountain is no longer a stone fountain of flowers and vines it is a mass of writhing tentacles extruding from a massive, massive brain that kind of rises up out of the water. And in your minds, you feel this oppressive presence kind of pressing in from all sides of your consciousness. Whoops. Uh, huh? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Um, Elaine looks over and her voice now 
much deeper. So this is our friend. They have been a great asset to us as they're able to see and hear things that we cannot. Uh, if you accept this, which you have said that you do, you can become an extension to this thing's consciousness. You will retain your own thoughts and feelings and emotions, but it will be able to act through you. You will become part of a cohesive unit that, while you maintain your free will, it will be able to direct you in the best ways for our organization. There is these large, like, brown tentacles, like, kind of whip up from the brain and, like, reach towards the two of you. What do you do? What are you? You hear it in your mind. Well, you don't hear it. There's not really true language. Um, but a series of thoughts and images come to your mind of centuries, if not millennia, of different consciousness uh, feeding into one source. Uh, you see a lot of flashes of deep purple skin and tentacles, lots of images of mind flayers and illithids and other creatures from the depths of the Underdark and other awful dark regions of the plains. This is an elder brain. Anybody who knows what that is. Yeah, what is the reaction from uh, the rest of you? <laughs> it's underneath his breath, seeing it. It's like words that I can't repeat. <laughs> Elhan definitely wants to start getting ready for a fight, but he's not going to take any actions to, you know, spoil his, you know, his, his hiding spot. All right. So I ask again, Vivian and Jean, this thing is extended towards you. What do you do? Uh, I don't think we have any option at this point. Turning around and walking away now that we know the secret is probably fatal. Is is this what you were expecting, Jean? No. And his his normally just like calm and controlled demeanor is just gone at this point. I I I thought I thought that we were going to, to sit down with another normal person, not a thing, and then we were going to, to have a a, a formal conversation. And I, 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 I like to to be in, to know and have control, and I have. I've never seen one of these in my life, and it's been kind of long. See, well, I was thinking maybe some kind of magical contract. I'm not sure I like the idea of being a part of a hive mind. What now? I'm going, I would like to cast the message spell and send it to um, Gene and let him know that we're there actually so that way he doesn't think okay. he's on his own with this. All right. <laughs> So Jean, in your say. in your panic, you uh, do hear message from Alhan saying what exactly? Saying, 
I'm we're back. We back your play. We're here. We want to take this thing down. Let's do it. I guess. And I'm gonna like clear my throat and sh straighten my tie and regain composure. And I'm going to reach my hand out and say, I guess whatever we're going to do, we're going to do it from the inside. Because at this point, there's nothing we can do out here. All right, then. All right. So you're going to accept the influence of the Elder Brain? Yes. All right. Yep. <laughs> so Hopefully, you know, Han can kill it. Yeah. Can Sev before they before they touch the thing? Uh huh. Are both his pistols at the tentacles coming at them? You're going to fire at the tentacles. Okay. Or scare um, enough. All right, you can make two attacks. Um, Goodbye, Sev. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say. Yeah, you... Oh, wait, hang on. No, because it's you, and you don't really have a mind. Exactly. You do get advantage, um, as the Elder Brain is not actually able to sense you there. So Warforged do also have... I think it's advantage against anything psychic or mental, so... Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, sorry, let me get that. Let me get that. <laughs> so I have to get to it. Right. Um. All right, a seventeen. Or the uh, yeah. Eldritch Cannon. That'll hit. All right. And then it's going to do do it. Uh, eight damage to it. Knocks okay. it back five feet if it can. <laughs> um, let's see. Does it? Is there like a size limit on it? I'm looking Probably at fine. it. This thing is only size large. Doesn't say. Okay. So then, yeah, you can knock it five feet back. So, uh, Jean and Vivian, as you reach your hands out towards this thing, and these sickly brown tentacles kind of like reach to encircle your hands and forearms there is this blast of fire from behind you and the thing is pushed away and the tentacles like scrape across your arms and hands as it they are forced away from you um at this point i think we should probably roll initiative don't you guys think yes <laughs> surprise The monster. Okay, did anyone get above a 20? Yes. What did you get? 22. Okay. <laughs> by your reaction, did you get a natural 20 by any chance? I did. I did. <laughs> Not exactly the role you want to get a natural 20 for, but still pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> still pretty good. Um, 15 to 20. I got an 18. Okay. I got a 15. Okay. Uh, and Jean, what did you get? 15. Okay. I imagine you might have higher decks than Vivian. So you are before her. 18 decks. Okay. And. Okay. Right. So the order as it stands. Sev, Elhan, Jean, Vivian, Elaine, the Elder Brain, and then Delilah. So Sev, we're gonna start with you. Now that you have revealed your position and fired on the Elder Brain, 
you see it reels and there is a well you can't actually perceive this quite as much it's a little bit dulled to you but there is this this burbling rage that fills the air and the minds of people around this thing so what do you want to do um Dev is then going to run up and then cast a thunder wave on it at level two okay thanks appreciate that he just goes cover your ears <laughs> all right is that a roll to hit or do i need to make a save for that to make a save okay Con what 15. kind of save is it Con save oh it succeeds that is a... okay yeah but it only takes seven damage then all right so this burst of thunder blasts through the space um ripples the water the murky green waters of the pool um elhan that's you now with gene on deck okay so i'm going to you know charge out of my um hiding spot pull out my watch and grip it tightly and use my bastion of law feature expending five um sorcery points to give myself a pool of five d8s anytime i take damage i can roll one of those d8 or any number of those d8s and reduce the damage by that amount okay it kind of takes the form of this hexagonal um like you know like the shape of a d12 around me um okay. and that is the extent of my turn all right. All right, Jean, that's you, and then Vivian. I am going to throw off my suit jacket. That takes full I'm action. Gonna... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> How rude. Uh, I'm going to use my... I just looked at it. What was it called? My cunning action to disengage my full movement back from the brain and i'm going to pull out i actually brought the big old honking pistol for mayana that i never returned to her this time as opposed to my little snub nose 357 and i am going to fire at the uh elder brain all right That's going to be, hanging, uh, 23. That hits. Man, I would really love to get some gun crits in this fight. Those are and fun. that's 14. All right. Bullet whizzes from the gun, lodges itself in the mass of this floating brain. Um... And then I want to just say, Vivian, don't accept! All right, Vivian, that's you then. What would you like to do? He is going to cast heat metal on the bullet that he just fired into the brain. It's a me and Eric level shenanigans. Mm, <laughs> That's the only, is, you know okay. who she plays with. <laughs> yeah. Can you read me the description of that spell so we can work out exactly how painful that's going to be, and especially over time? Okay, let's see. You cause the object to glow red hot. Any creature in physical contact with the object takes 2d8 fire damage when you cast the spell. Until the spell ends, you can use a bonus action on each of your subsequent turns to cause this damage again. All right, that's pretty straightforward. <laughs> the brain cannot do a whole lot to remove contact with the bullet currently. So that's uh, 2d8, I think it was? Uh, roll the damage. Fire damage, yep. 14. Nice. Um, yeah, there's like this glow that comes from the bullet through the 
the matter of the brain. Um, this thing cannot audibly scream, but its tentacles like flail and some a couple of them like start gripping at the spot to see if it can hopefully dislodge it at some point. That okay. was not fun. Um, do you want to move or do anything else on your turn? Can I use my bonus action to give someone an inspiration die? Yes, you can. Who would you like to give it to? She pats Jean on the hand and says, don't worry, we've got... Here. You get 1d8. Alright. Okay. Elaine is going to take her turn. She is... Um, her small form is like vibrating in uh, anger channeled through her from the elder brain. Um, she is nearby and she is going to yeah she pulls out this little this little sword kind of materializes in her hand and she's going to take um, a swipe at Vivian who just cast this spell. Uh, that's a 25 to hit, so I assume that'll hit. It does. Yeah. Uh, oof. Um, she doesn't get any of her sneak attack damage on you because you're not engaged with the Elder Brain physically, uh, but you do take nine points of piercing damage. And... Um... And she's going to disengage and fly off a little bit to not be right next to you. Um, kind of like duck behind some bushes to get out of view a little bit. And now it's the Elder Brain's turn. Okay. The uh, massive slimy form it seems to contract for a second, and then this blast of psychic energy emits from it. I need everybody to make a intelligence saving throw. Twenty, not natural. Okay. What do you want? Anyone? Smart boys. 11. Okay. 16. 16. And Delilah got... Let's see. What was hers? Uh, enough. So, Vivian and Jean, you fail the save. You take... 26 psychic damage as the rage and pain of this being enters your minds and just absolutely shakes your consciousness. You are also stunned for the next minute. You can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of your turns to help hopefully break the stun lock that you are in. And I guess everyone who saved is fine. There doesn't say anything about having the damage on a success. So you take no damage on the success. So good job for you all. Um, <laughs> um of note, something that I need to uh, put out there, Delilah being a paladin, um, if you are close enough to her, you get a buff on any saving throws that you need to make. She currently hasn't moved out of her hiding spot, so as far as I know, only Elhan would probably be close enough to benefit from that currently. Um, and it is now her turn. Um, she's gonna step out. Um, her face absolutely blank with a mixture of rage and terror. She's gonna pull out her gun and fire on the Elder Brain. That's an 11. That will hit. 
And the next is a 22, that will hit. Um, so both of those will actually hit. Oh, that's the wrong die. Ah, I'm grabbing the wrong dice. And she deals some damage to the brain. Um, and she's going to move, actually, because she knows the effect that she has, she's going to move up towards you two stunned uh, people to hopefully help on your saving throws. Um, Sev, that's you now, with Elhan on deck. Alrighty. Sev's then going to catch, cast Scorching Ray. Okay. At it. Da -da 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 -da. All right, uh, 24 for the first one. Yeah, that'll hit. <laughs> and that does eight damage. Okay. And then for the second one, uh, 18. That will also hit. Okay. And that one does seven. Then not nat 20. Okay. That'll do 11. Three blasts all in a row, um, burning and charring, and like this sizzling smoke comes off of it. It's the smell, it, you're not close enough to register it, and you're made of metal, so you can't really smell it. Um, but Elhan, you imagine it's probably pretty gnarly, pretty rank. Um, okay. Elhan, that is you next. Am I correct in assuming that the Elder Brain is an aberration? Uh, you are DNA? correct in assuming that, I yes. Okay, I would like to cast Protection from Evil and Good, touching Vivian. So moving close to Vivian, cast Protection from Evil and Good. That will allow Vivian, so any attack rolls made against Vivian by the Elder Brain will be at disadvantage, and the target also can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by the creature. Okay. Good to know. This does not affect the stun condition as yeah, that is. Yeah, it doesn't affect the stun, sense. but yeah. But I'm attacks against that. her have disadvantage. Okay. Yep. And so that's the action. And I unfortunately, as a sorcerer, don't have a lot of bonus actions. So that will be my turn. Okay. After your turn, the Elder Brain is going to take one of its legendary actions and reach forward and attack Jean with one of its tentacles. It gets advantage because you are stunned. Um, that's a 23 to hit. Ooh. I assume that hits. I'm just gonna just guess that. Man, you guys are lucky I'm rolling so bad for damage. <laughs> That's um, 13 bludgeoning damage. And this yeah, tentacle right. wraps around you and you are grappled. And because I'm stunned, I'm guessing I can't uncanny dodge. No, you cannot. Um, and also at the beginning of your turn, which is the next one up, you take an additional seven psychic damage as like these teeny tiny little needle like spines on this thing kind of like wrapping up around the back of your neck and your head shoot this uh psychic energy into your body um you are stunned so you cannot act until you can make your intelligent saving throw you do get a plus five bonus to this as you are close enough to Delilah to benefit from that. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so I got a 19. That is enough to save. You regain your composure to find yourself completely encircled around with this disgusting tentacle, leaving drippings of this disgusting water and goop on your clothes and body 
All right, Vivian, that's you now. You also get plus five to your intelligence save. That would be a 25 then. Okay. You also regain composure. Um, Did being stunned break the concentration for the heat metal spell? No, it if does not break concentration. Okay. Yeah, and you didn't take any damage. Well, you did take one little bit of damage. I do need a concentration check. That is a constitution saving throw. You only need a 10 or higher. This is also benefiting from the plus five from Delilah. So you basically need to nat one to fail this. Oh, I got a three. Okay, you're good then. <laughs> um, okay. It's now Elaine's turn. Actually, no. At the end of Vivian's turn, the Elder Brain is going to make another tentacle attack on Vivian, who, being no longer stunned and being protected by Elhan, it gets disadvantage. And that is a natural one, then. Completely <laughs> overextends the tentacle. It, like, slaps on the ground right next to you. Um, no, no contact. <laughs> All right. Elaine is going to cast Cause Fear. I mean, the counter um, spell. Okay. There you go. That's that. That's it. <laughs> this, like, bolt of light comes shooting out right towards your face, Elhan, and you just deflect it away. All right. That's the Elder Brain's turn again. Let's see if it gets its Mind Blast back. It does not. Darn. So what can it do? You guys are not stunned anymore. It can do another tentacle attack, and that is what it's going to do. It's going to reach out towards uh, Elhan this time. That's a 16. That will hit. Okay. This nasty protrusion. Oh, that's a much better roll. Oh, boy. That is 20 points. No, 22 points of bludgeoning damage. And you are grappled by this tentacle. All right. Delilah is going to pull out uh, her own sword and slice down at the tentacle holding onto Elhan. And that, that was caught. Ooh, that's a natural 20 for her. Oh, jeez. Oh, it's a great sword, too. I forgot about that. That's a lot more damage. Would have been nice if it had been a gun crit. But... Would have been nice if it would have been a gun crit. At 16 points of slashing damage, she will make a second attack. Um, That will still hit. So a total of 20 points of slashing damage from her. This thing is starting to... Um, like, she isn't quite able to fully sever the tentacle holding you, Elhan, but it is severely injured. And this, it's like clear fluid starts oozing from the wound. Uh, Sev, you're up with Elhan on deck. Sev's gonna shoot it with his uh, Eldritch Cannon, Flamethrower okay. this time. Uh, -huh. uh a team hit yeah the ac okay. of the elder brain is only 10 because it is a, a big soft squishy mass of internal organs when it can make a deck save if it wants <laughs> um needs a dc 15. okay it has a plus zero to its dexterity saving throws that is an 18 though 
Okay. And he is shooting at the area where it's holding Gene to try to get it to drop Gene. Okay. Do you have a feature for that? To get it to drop uh, or something like that? I don't. Okay. After it is nine damage. Okay. I will kind of take that into consideration for any check that Gene makes to try and break the grapple as it is injured in that space. But um, yeah, not enough to drop him right away. Uh, okay. Then I'm going to use my bonus action to fire my other pistol. Okay. That same tentacle. No. Oh no. What are the chances of 3d20s in one night? Did you get another another crit? I did. I did. And, and it's this a gun is, crit. Well, the thing is with um, Sev's magical weapons, oh, it is, is only the a, gun. not magical not a gun. Okay, then, yeah, that is a gun, a gun crit then. Five oh. times. Roll that die five times. All right. Wow. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. That, that, All right. So eight. Uh-huh. Another eight. Okay. Another eight? Wait a minute, is this broken? <laughs> okay, let's see. Hold on. Okay, okay. Miss, does Seven. Little Miss Fodder send you a bunch of dice? Oh, any I'm chance? Gonna... So, three eights, a seven, and a ten. Okay, hang on. Let me try and do math. 24, 31, 41. 41. 41 points of damage in a single shot. I am going to say that that is enough for the tentacle to release Gene and drop him to the ground. Oof. Ow. Dice gods. Oh my gosh. Wow. All Let's right. <laughs> Jeez. Um, all right, uh, Elhan, that is your turn. You take a little bit of psychic damage at the beginning of your turn. It's not very much. Uh, much it is only seven. Much. Only seven. You have a very weird comprehension of how many hit points a sorcerer has. Yeah, that's true. Well, I only rolled a two on the damage die. It has a plus five modifier to that damage, so. Seven. All right. So I don't have to try to attempt to break via the grapple, right? You don't have to, no. You're just stuck where you are until you do, though. Okay, and it continues to damage need... you at the start of your turn until you break it. I'm going to use my... I'm going to cast aid at a four, in my fourth level spell slot, targeting myself, Vivian, and Jean to give us all 15 additional hit points added to our, our hit point maximum and current hit points. All right. And that's not a concentration spell, right? That is not. It lasts for eight hours. Okay. Jeez. Sev, you're not close by, are you? You've kept your distance. Standing in, well, like, he was standing in between, um, like, right behind Vivian and Jean. So he's right where they are. All right. Okay. Well, then the Elder Brain is going to make an, a, a tentacle attack on you. Gosh I dang it. It can't close. make any... Yeah, it can't make any psychic links with you guys because you won't stay stunned for very long. So it's just gonna just brute force it on you. Uh, that's a 22 to hit. That does hit, in case you're guessing. Um, oh, good. That's, yeah. In case any of you have monster ACs without me knowing. Uh, um, I'm gonna cast shield as it, as it hits me. Uh, What's that bring your AC up to? Yeah, does that bring it past the 22? Well, then it, <laughs> it's going to miss. All right. I, I was like, I'm going to use shield at some point during this like mini campaign. And finally, it came up. <laughs> so the the tentacle like reaches around and like begins to encircle you and you cast this spell that like forces it, like expands from you and like forces its grip off of you. Um, and... It, the the actual main structure of the brain has like gr gradually come closer to the rest of you and it doesn't have a face it doesn't have eyebrows but man this thing looks really mad <laughs> somehow it is able to intimate that to the rest of you with its lack of a face uh gene it is your turn now 
from their shield. I am going to take the most bad A looking stance in the world. Just imagine how awesome he looks. And I'm going to use the steady aim feature, <clears throat> which lets me use my bonus action to give myself advantage on the next attack roll on my current turn, as long as I don't move. But that means I also have no movement until the end of my current turn. And I'm going to attack. And I, it's going to be a 22 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. <laughs> Uh, the, that's going to be, um, no, uh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, nice. What, how much damage, sorry? Wait, nine. Am I? You can add your sneak attack. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know if you I had advantage on the, on the roll. Oh, good. And that's 46 now that you're level seven. So that's um, a 19 in addition to the nine, so 28 damage. 28. Oof. Okay, this thing's starting to look kind of rough at this point. There's like little bits of it um, splattering off. I forgot it didn't take that 1d8 of superheated bullet damage, uh, Vivian, if you'd roll that. I think it's only had the one turn since then, yeah. So. It was 2d8. Super it's 1d8 on damage. the subsequent turns, 2d8 on the first oh. time it happens. Great. Well, I thought, does it happen on my turn? Because I thought since I was stunned that turn, I didn't get to do it. Oh, yeah, you're right. It requires a bonus action to keep it heated. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Well, you get your turn now, so you are able to do that. <laughs> Lovely. So, yeah, that's what I'll do for my bonus action, but for her action... She wants to cast Dissonant Whispers. So she starts to whisper a discordant melody, and it must make a wisdom saving throw. And on a failed save, it takes 3d6 second damage. Uh, that's a 28. So I imagine that succeeds. <laughs> it does. It does indeed. So then she just does her bonus action to do the heat metal. All right, that's 1d8, I believe. Four. Okay. All right. Um, it is going to use another one of its legendary actions. The only one it can use, because it doesn't have a psychic link, is another tentacle attack. Um... Uh, it's going to go for Jean. Where's my dice? Okay. That's a nat one. <laughs> Again. <laughs> All right. Elaine from the Watches corners. And it just like flats in front of me and I'm like. <laughs> There's this like spray of drops of gucky fluid that splatter you. Um, Elaine is going to try what does she have does she have a gun she's got to have a gun right she doesn't have oh. a gun wow why did i not give her a gun <laughs> okay let me make sure of this spell really quick she's gonna try and cast lightning lure i'm gonna counter spell uh <laughs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm playing extreme defense in this combat. And I love it. Sorcerer clerics are really. I'm mean, sorcerer. I'm mean, uh, law, or, law uh, order. Sorcerers are really uh, support sorcerers. They're really not damage sorcerers. Yeah, she doesn't have <laughs> anything that you can't counter spell immediately. She's you know not super super. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, well. I only have one counter spell left. Don't worry. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna matter at this point. Wow, um, it's the Elder Brain's turn. We'll see if it gets its mind explosion back. No, it doesn't. Dang it. So because of that, it can only continue doing the one action available to it. 
because you know, yeah that's yeah that's the only thing it can do so it is going to wrap Callahan with another tentacle it won't increase the grapple um escape dc for you or anything but it is going to attack you again um you're not restrained so it doesn't get advantage it's only an 11. that will miss thank god <laughs> freaking whenever i choose to not roll one of little miss fodder's dice is when i just fail completely so that's over with <laughs> um Okay, is anybody looking all that hurt, all that damaged? Asking for Delilah, not the Elder Brain. <laughs> okay. Um, you are a bad guy though, so Delilah is not going to help you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm about, I'm about half. Okay. Zero damage. All right. Um. Yeah, so she's gonna reach over to Elhan and like grab you by the shoulder and you are going to receive uh, 10 hit points back. Neat. Yes. And what else can she do? What are her bonus actions? I don't really have any, not anything good. Really sad. Okay. Okay. After her turn, the elder brain is going to just keep tentacling you all because that's all he can do. It can do. It is an amalgamation of several consciousness. It does not have any sort of identity in and of itself. Um. It's gonna go. It's gonna keep going for Jean. Uh, that's a twenty-one. To hit. Okay. Uncanny dodge. Okay, so you will take half of this damage. Uh, can I can I possibly do math? Is that something I'm capable of? That's twenty three, halved to eleven bludgeoning damage, and you are grappled. Again. Okay. Sev, that's you with Elhan on deck. Sev's gonna cast his final level two spell, Scorching Ray. Okay. Uh, 12? It's a 10, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's just see how many have to roll. Missed the second one. I only got a nine. Ah, oh, drat. But a 15, so. Two 15. Two okay, so two of them hit. Okay. Uh, That's an 11. Total for both of them? That's 12. No, I got 23. Hey, oh. this is maybe the best I've ever rolled in my life. <laughs> <laughs> if there is a night to do it, it is while you're fighting an elder brain. Um, you blast this thing and like the entire surface of like the front of it is just charred and there's like little bits of it falling off. It is so extremely badly damaged at this point, but it is still up. I take a bonus action? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot it. <laughs> Can you can you just shoot as a bonus action, or do you need to have used the attack action on your action? I have to. I only have a couple, but I can use a light sidearm, a light pistol, light firearm, as a bonus action three times. Okay. All right. Let's just die. <laughs> okay. All right, the Elder Brain's gonna take one more legendary action. It gets three of them around and it's really easy to go through them. Another one on Jean, cause you're low. It's a 19. You said that you weren't asking for the Elder Brain. 
it is able to sense your weakness. It is inside your mind, whether you know it or not. Also can see through Elaine's eyes for sure. Okay. Uh, 18 bludgeoning damage. So, how often am I able to use uncanny dodge? Because it just says when an attacker that you can see hits you with an attack. Oh, you can use your reaction, so once every yeah. round. Okay, got once it. Around. All right. Just had to check. Where did my... Oh, I... okay. I was like, I think that I just closed my character sheet, but it... Okay. All right. You that's still up, though? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Elhan, that's you. Hey, roll you, your damage. Yeah. You are currently Wait. grappled by two tentacles. Um, so that's... Ooh, that's actually a lot. That's actually okay, how a much lot. is a lot? Because that's, that's going to determine 21. how many you... 21 okay, psychic damage. used my five... Um, well, how much... I'm going to use two... Let me see. Okay, I'm going to use two of my Bastion of Law things to decrease the damage by eight... Plus six. So I decrease the damage by math. Fourteen. It's hard. Fourteen. Fourteen. So seven damage. Cool. All right. And then I'm going to use my, on my turn, I'm going to use my last two sorcery points to cast a Bastion of Law on Gene. Okay. <laughs> So what does that do exactly? So he can, <laughs> he, when he takes damage, he can roll as many of those. So it's a d8 per sorcery point so you can roll as many of those d8s as you want to decrease the damage he takes okay and that's all for your turn and that's all for my turn and i'm out of sorcery points okay the elder brain on its last legs is going to use its last legendary action for the round try and take down just one person and it's <laughs> going to try and tentacle attack gene that is a dirty 20 see if you can save yourself with these this bastion of law that's not so great of a roll 17 points of bludgeoning damage and you now have two tentacles around you as well yeah uh, jeans down down you roll for the bastion of law Four. Oh, that sucks. All right. So you don't fall to the ground as you are continually supported by the tentacles of this creature, but you all see Jean lose consciousness um, and fall limp in the tentacles of the Elder Brain. Jean, it is now your turn. You take psychic damage, so you automatically lose one death saving throw, and now you roll another. Uh, natural one. The natural one counts as two failures, which sets you to three. So you all see the last breath of Gene leave his body as he dies. Let's see. Because you know what? Uh, okay. All right. Um. Okay. Use my flash of genius, not natural one. It wouldn't do anything, right? It wouldn't elevate it to a not natural one. What does your flash of genius yeah. do? It's a plus four. It modifiers it don't throw. affect death saving throws. A natural one is still a natural one. Yeah. All right, Vivian. Why couldn't my turn have been sooner? What would you like to do? You can't save Jean now. Ah. So I guess she's gonna cast Cure Wounds on Elhan instead. Okay. I will say that Elder Brain is extremely damaged right now. She wants to do the heat metal thing on her bonus action. Okay. All right. I forgot about that. 
So 13 hit points for Elhan. Okay. And roll your damage for the heat metal. Four. Nice. How do you want to do this? Spectacularly. Uh huh. How does it happen? What does it look like? <laughs> I don't know. Can it like explode in a shower of goo? Yeah, for sure. Just this heated bullet has been burning its way and falling and burrowing itself deeper into the center of this. Uh, cerebric mass, and it hits some delicate sack of something on the inside that ignites in a flash of flame and explodes this creature, splattering viscous nasty all over the surrounding area, across the trees and the grass. Um, Elaine immediately stops attacking. And Delilah... Uh, pulls out of her pocket a very fancy diamond. But she does have one use of Revivify available to her. She looks over at you, Elhan. What do you think? I'll look at Vivian and Sev and say, what do you guys think? I know what He's I want to, have to do. Caught his body. He's going to have caught Gene's body and put him down gently. Yeah. Okay. Should be his answer well enough. Okay, Vivian. What do you think? Bring him back. I know that you don't agree with him, Elhan, but he did mention that he has regrets at how his life had gone. Maybe if we give him a second chance, he'll change it around. Also, he did seem to want the crime in this city to be more orderly and to involve the innocent less. So... Sev just looks and goes, he didn't pick this. I can understand that enough. All right, do it. Bring it back. Delilah bends over Jean's body, casts Revivify. The shower of golden sparks falls across your body. Jean, breath returns to you, and your eyes open. You owe me one. Maybe more pierce. than one. It is your life. He's just going to kind of sit there and for the first time, probably in 150 issues, people are going to see Jean start crying. He's just um, like lean back and close his eyes. I'm going to turn to Elaine. You're under arrest for consorting with, you know, conspiracy to uh, destruction of the city. Some, you know. You can either resist, or you can do this quietly. So, with the destruction of the Elder Brain, she is actually, like, stunned. Like, she, her eyes are kind of, like, flickering back and forth with, like, her actual eye color and this sort of, like, green color. Um, she's kind of... She's not resisting. She's kind of unresponsive. I'm going to request <laughs> Delilah put her handcuffs on her. Do you I'm have gonna... itty bitty sprite size handcuffs? <laughs> I'm sure we have something like yeah, that. Magical we... handcuffs that just yeah, they can uh, we grow can and shrink. Yeah. Am I okay. the only captain at this point? What? Not yet. Not yeah, yet. no one has tried to contact the the cops on the outside. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna need them sit up, and I'm gonna look over. Um, do I notice the kind of like yes. kind of thing? Yes. I'm gonna look at uh, Alhan and say. I think that you should send cops all over the city now at this point. I can't imagine how many people are going to be stunned for this long, but I know at the very least you're now able to arrest the Dom and his wife. That's the plan. I'm guessing that the jig is going to be up for me as well. Unfortunately. 
Sev, Sev looks at Elhan and goes, "It's a shame Jean died, didn't? Isn't it?" It is a shame Jean died. Fought really hard and really helped us out. Yeah. It's a shame I, if some. Yeah. I'll miss him a little bit. I don't know. You uh, it's up to you. You want to be dead, or uh. You know, it's it's been a long time since any and his his you know accent is all gone. It's been a long time since anybody's called me Nicholas. What's my real name? Well, Nick. Or, it was Gene's real name. Interestingly enough, we have the same first name. Well, Nick, I'm sorry that you got caught up in whatever terrible events transpired here. Don't let me see your face in Shade City ever again. Your life. Be better than you were. Um, can I have a moment with you, Detective, before I buy a bus ticket to the next place? After yeah. it's all sorted out? And I would recommend taking your friends with you, by the way. You wouldn't want to start a new life alone. Yeah, uh, there's only one of them that I might even consider taking with me. The two Seder brothers you can lock up for all that I care. By the way. Alright, but, okay. Um, I'm gonna look at Delilah and say, get that thing we came here for, and then come find me when you're done. She nods and turns away to go looking for stuff. I'm gonna go fall with, go off with Jean by by ourselves. Okay. Uh, I'm going to write down uh, uh, a an account number to a bank, and I'm going to hand it to Elhan, and I'm going to say, there's a lot of money there. I'm certain that you could put it to good use somewhere. This bribe? No. I, for a long time, have wanted to not be Gene Gloss. And now I have the opportunity. Of course, that's not everything. I'm not going to go start poor, but you don't think that I put all of my eggs in one basket. I can't keep my promises to anybody at this point. If you're taking away my power and my prestige. Well, I'm hoping that with the shattering of your organization, we'll probably see some bloodshed for a while. But that will be... It'll be easier to keep this disease under control. We're not the only ones out there. Right now, my major concern is the 12th, and I think I'll have the 12th under control. I can work on the rest of the city after that. Well, and your friend? You're just gonna let her walk? No, I don't think I will. You have the amulet. Why didn't she just give it to me? I, I don't trust you that much. As much, I'm gonna give her as much as I want to. They can't have a cop like that on the force. It's negative. I've seen the way, I guess I should say, Elhan, I've seen the way that you look at her. Don't throw away something that might come to pass for something so dumb as a misguided attempt to do good. I would say legitimately, give me the amulet. Let me take it somewhere else, and you start a new, happier life here. I have no idea how far this particular monster's influence spread, but I'm certain that there's more than just a few members of the Regalia who are going to be standing around not able to do anything for who knows how long. I have no idea how many people that you're going to be able to rest here in the next amount of time, but who knows, maybe the 12th Precinct will become the safest place in the city. And I think 
that because it is mostly due to you and Sev and Vivian, I'm getting my reward for my good deeds in the form of a brand new life. If the evidence is gone, the evidence is gone. It's just the way of things here in Shade City for now. Don't be dumb, detective. If there's one thing I know about you, it's you're not dumb, and you won't ever see me again. I'm a man of my word. Have I ever led you astray in the short time you've known me? No. Not that you haven't tried. I have not tried. I have only ever told you the truth. I'll make my decision when she gets over here with the amulet. Uh, I, I would like a moment to say goodbye to all of our companions first. Of course. Take your time. Um, yeah, take your time. I'm going to go over to Vivian first. I can't keep my promise to you at this point, but I'm positive that there's going to be quite a number of openings here as the Fortuna Nera changes ownership. So at the very least, I can I can kind of say that I got you an audition. Somehow. I understand. Enjoy your second chance. Thank you. I hope you get your big break. Oh, I need to have a word with Detective Anderson. Yeah, I guess we should say that he now owes all of you a favor. He does. He owes oh. me big time. I'm gonna take her hand and, you know, do the little kiss the hand of the princess thing, and then I'm gonna walk over to Sev. I got your message. I'm a, I'm a good caster. I figured you would. Sev? Seven? O seven, 7 whatever your name is, actually, I'm sorry that I didn't pay as much attention when you introduced yourself to me as I should have, but you... It's like I said, that you have the potential to prove that you are more than just a piece of, large piece of metal. I can't get your expressive face for you at this point. Something. Um, Don't worry, I can. I'm good with metal. To be 100 percent honest with you, I wouldn't trust anybody connected to us to do that, because in the interest of paint, you know, in the interest of clearing the air before I leave, I had every intention of using that over you, and so if you go and find someone else who you can't trust to do it for you, then it'll probably thwart you in your quest to prove that you are a man. Someone worthy of respect. You have... Not a quest. I know that for myself at this point. You have a heart of gold, even if it's not made of such. I feel like a zinc alloy. Um, <laughs> And I'm glad that you gave me another chance, despite all of the terrible things that I said to you. It deserves a second chance. I got mine. I'm gonna extend a hand out to you. Takes it. He is a little rough on the handshake, though. And Sev, maybe try accepting a little bit more money when you take cases. There's no reason for someone of your skills to be in a tiny office with a single closet. I'm happy with that. I don't need much more. But you might be able to make a better impression and help more people if you seem just a little bit more professional. Ask me, and I'm certain she could help you figure it out. Might be out of that office soon enough, maybe. He lets go of his hand. I'm going to 
walk away and leave my suit coat on the ground. And I'm not wearing my hat anymore, but I leave my hat on the ground and as I'm walking away, I'm gonna untie my tie and going to vanish into the darkness outside of the hotel or the casino, I mean. Am I supposed to get you an amulet if you disappear? <laughs> yes, you better figure out how to make it disappear. Uh, Seb is going to turn to Vivian and be like, I, I am glad you're okay, by the way. You, you did really, that was really cool how you killed that thing. I was super smart. You, you'd make a really good detective. Thank you. I don't think I want to be a detective, though. Oh, if you need a job singing, I do know a bar that could use a singer. They need a little bit more life in the place. And I do know that they're wanting to expand to beyond Warforged. You can put a good word in, I am their number one patron. I, I do appreciate that, Sev, but is that the bar that we met you at before? Well, a little bit, yeah. It doesn't look as nice during the day, but when it's lit up at night, it's actually very pretty. Ah, yes, it's a charming establishment, but I'm looking for a place that's a little bit classier. But Sorry, I just... I thought it'd be cool if you were the first human to sing in a Warforged bar. First half elf. Yeah, not not really human. Thank you, Sev. Okay. I need yeah. I need to talk with Detective Anderson. I don't, I. He tried to do something right. I wouldn't hurt him too bad if you can avoid it. Okay, just for you, Sev. You're a really good friend. I'm happy we met. I am too. But Sev, if you're gonna wear that salmon-colored suit, you're not allowed to tell people that I help you pick out your clothes. It'll ruin <laughs> my reputation. That's fair. It looks good. Like, I looked good killing that thing, though. So, like, you know, it kind of worked. I was able to sneak in here with it. Your fighting skills are very impressive. But sometime when I come visit you, if that suit disappears, don't look for it. It's been burnt. Oh. Okay. He kind of looks sad, but he like smiles like a little like smile and he goes, I'm going to go. I'm going to go help out the police as much as I can. Go have that talk. Yeah. Do you want to go grab the captain and the other officers outside? He is. He is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Mama it's interesting, Baker. as you walk back out of the establishment, there is a hefty chunk of the staff that is just standing and staring into space. <laughs> and some of the patrons are like, mm -hmm. like there's some more of like the karen -y people who have like come up to me like, excuse me, excuse me, did you hear me? Like, there's a, there's a lot of that going on. Dev's gonna push him out of the way, he goes, it's police business, out of the way, out of the way, as he pushes uh, the people trying to get their attention. Okay. He's gonna go get the captain. Okay. Like, all right, you guys are, he's able, he calls in a few more, a bunch more officers to handle this. There's a lot of people, um, they're going to start working on that. But back to, um, back to the garden. Well, Miss Baker, what can I do for you? Yeah, Detective Anderson, Elhan, I don't work for free. And you're running Jean out of town. You're also arresting the Dom. So now I'm right back to square one. I am unemployed and homeless, sleeping in your guest room. Well, I can offer you our usual consulting fee, maybe a little bit higher than our usual consulting fee of a plot appropriate amount of money. <laughs> yep. Um, and I can be happy to help you find where you have a place to stay. We have, uh, we have resources in the department to help, uh, relocate witnesses and things like that. I'm sure we can find you a spot, a place that you could, uh, you could stay. Very nice place, too. To, um, the gift and reward for all the help you've been these past, uh, few, uh, past few, uh, 
you know, days. Not to get earned. And I wrote also, earned. I've seen your precinct and I've been living in your apartment. It better be a very nice place. It will be the nicest place that I can get you, I promise that. It'll be the, the, the best, even if we have to kick someone out, that we will, it'll be the nicest place we can get you. And if you could try not to shut this establishment down while you find a new owner for it, unlike with the silver leaf, maybe you could help me get a job here. I would be more than happy to help you do that. I'm afraid that you're overestimating my sphere of influence a bit, but I could, at least currently, if other plans take place, then yeah, I, I can probably do that. Good, work on it because I sleep down the hall from you at the moment. Yeah, we're gonna push that along rather quickly. <laughs> There's anything that Vivian has proven in the past few days is she's a scary woman. <laughs> and I would almost say that you're wasting your talents as a singer. I mean, not wasting your talents as a singer. There's a lot more you could do besides be just a singer for the good of the world. Well, there's nothing that says once I achieve my goals that I'm going to stay just a singer. I look forward to seeing where your career will take you. Good, because you're going to be helping it along in the beginning. As much as I can. I owe you that much. All right, then. You can rest easy tonight. I probably won't. But thank you. And in my defense, Jean was the one who burned the silver leaf down, so... He attempted to. Remember, he failed. <laughs> sure, he did fail. All right, I have goo on me. I'm going back to your place to shower. Or one of the officers would be glad to take you back there. Thank you. You're welcome. If they, if they question, just say Elhan sent you. All right. Do you head off to the Anderson apartment? Yes. All right. So. At this point, oh, Han, uh, Delilah walks up. She's got dirt and mud up to her elbows. There's a bit smeared across her face. She's got a very dirty uh, pendant on a chain. She hands out to you. Can I take it? Look at her. So what are you going to do now? I don't know. I don't know if that's really up to me. I really like you, Delilah. And I don't want to see you go anywhere. But I don't think a career in law enforcement is the best option for you at this time. That's very fair. This, I think, probably is a third strike for me. I'm gonna need your badge. She nods, reaches into her pocket, pulls it out, hands it over to you. Alright. So now that we're no longer co-workers, are you gonna dump that lousy boyfriend of yours so I can take you to dinner? She uh, glances up at you, very surprised. A little smile appears on her face. I mean, I don't know how you could possibly think worse of me, but he wasn't ever really a boyfriend of mine. Just a means to an end, unfortunately. Then that should be no problem if you call on it. Then you call on him and tell him that it's no longer a. Uh... No longer going to be happening. Elhan. 
I don't understand. I've done some really bad things in the last couple of months. There's one thing that these past few days have taught me is that this disease has a lot of symptoms to it. But that's because you've done some bad things. I kind of glance off in the direction that Gene went. Doesn't mean you're all bad and doesn't mean that you're past hope. You were trying to do what you thought was right and in very different circumstances, I probably would have done exactly what you did. I would There's have other people. Very different circumstances. Well, it can be quite irritating to watch these people get away with all this stuff and not be, not be, not to get the justice that they deserve. But I, I imagine this actually probably goes up really high. I was an elder brain. Yeah. Commissioner Jeffries is a mind flayer. And he's next on the list of people I'm going to be looking into. I can't do it by myself, but I don't think that you being as a police officer would be the most beneficial. No, probably not. I have a friend. Warforged fellow by the name of Sev. I'm sure he'd be looking for a uh, partner with a police background. Uh, I'll have to think about that. I don't know if I really trust myself anymore. Don't let me help you trust yourself again. Okay. And with that, I'm going to go outside, and I want to find Edie. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Gene, you did not go and look for Edie, did you? Nope. I went and took my car and have left. But if there's right. one person in the world who could find me, it's going to be Edie. <laughs> Probably. Um... Uh... Yeah. Um, Elhan, make an investigation check. He's sitting there all zombie brain too. <laughs> That's going to be... 21. 21. Alright. So you... She, you look outside in that main room. Uh, you don't see her. You kind of get a thought. You turn and you head into the back into like the high roller rooms and you find her sifting through drawers, pulling out like poker chips and coins and things. Now that the place has been, you know, largely left unstaffed, she's taking advantage. <laughs> Having fun? Kind of stops, looks like under her arm over at you. Uh, yeah. I need you to do something for me. What? Your your boss? He died during the events of what transpired today. There's a friend of his by the name Nicholas. This I'm gonna hold out the pendant was in Jean's last will and testament to be delivered to Nicholas. Do you think you can handle that? To get it to his friend? His friend, Nicholas, yes. She takes the amulet from you, kind of like rubs a bit of uh, the grime off of it, revealing the very high quality um, gems and gold that it is crafted from. You want to give this to a friend of Mr. Glass? Are you sure you don't want to just give it to me? I could keep Positive. it. 
If I see that in my city anywhere else, I know who I'm coming after next. I mean, that you have to find to be out me. Of my city. I think my resources are going to be a lot bigger than they were before, Edie. Okay. Do you need anything just, else? Just tell Nicholas everything's going to be okay. Okay. Maybe you can give me permission. Can I start calling him Nicky then? He told me no, but... You're welcome to call him Nicky as much as you want. Great. Okay. Can I at least finish up in here? Or is that going to be a problem for you? There's a lot going to be a lot of cops coming through here in the next few minutes, and nobody's going to be above it. Above the, uh, above the sweep. I would get out of here if I were you. While I, mean, I can I, plausibly I say I've reason. never seen you. I do have some previous relationships with a couple of them, so I imagine they might be willing to let me get them the slip again. Up to you, but if the wrong cop comes in here and catches you, I can't make any promises. And I really need you to get that message to Nikki. Mm-hmm. And just maybe give me five minutes in here, okay? Five minutes. No, turn around and walk out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay. Unless there's other immediate conversations that want to happen now, we'll move on to a sort of, like, epilogue stage. Sev does want to talk to Elhan. Okay. They... He's gonna walk and be like, I, uh, guess we did it. Yeah. You think kind people of... are cured after killing the Elder Brain? No. This disease unfortunately isn't just one disease. I'm sure that Elder Brain was Hopefully one of the bigger ones, but there's gonna be a lot more that we've got to take care of. I meant, I meant the uh, actual sickness, not the one in the city. Oh, the actual sickness? Yeah, that's taken care of. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, I imagine there's gonna be a lot of people you need to arrest, right? Yep. You could, I could maybe stay on as a consultant for a little bit. Of course, you'd, uh, you'd have to accept our usual consultant fee, though. It'd be more than I usually make, so I'll take it. Perfect. Okay. I, uh... I'm glad to be working with you. Yeah. You might be getting a call from a friend of mine in the next few days, a woman named Delilah. If you could, uh... If you could help her out, I'd appreciate it. Does she need? I, of course I'll help her out. Any friend of yours is a friend of mine. Yeah, she might be looking for a job. Okay, she does need to understand the pay is not great. She'll also, as long as she's consulting with us, she'll also, you know, get the usual consultancy. Okay. Well, I... And ideally, hopefully she won't be relying on her own income for much longer. Okay. thumbs up <laughs> and then he's like real quick do you happen to know where i could get some really good metal or i can figure something out he's like i need it like within the next 10 minutes in the next 10 minutes probably in that place i'm gonna point at the <laughs> the casino the fortuna Nera, and be like take a look He's gonna go in there and I guess try to find like some of the better looking metal, maybe a goldish or platinum in there. Okay, roll an investigation check. Da -da -da -da. 26. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch. They, the cops have at this point cleared out a lot of the uh, more normal, non shady uh, patrons of the establishment. And some of them have left some nice things behind. Like, how much metal are you looking for? Enough to make a face. Enough to make a face. Okay. Um, there are a bunch of uh, fancy, like, rings around. Like, some people have... I mean, you could probably snag, like, sh pieces of chandelier. There are coins. If you want just, like, gold or platinum, you could probably bust in 
Uh, <laughs> actually, I think the way it would be is as you're looking around, Edie walks out of the back room uh, with like a big old bag, uh, like purse, absolutely stuffed full of stuff. Um, absolutely blasting with the, the clanking of coins in there. <laughs> He's going to very slowly walk over, stare her down, just reach into the bag and grab like a handful of metal stuff. Like, I'm taking this. Need this. Oh, okay. You gonna eat it? You have 15 seconds to get, out of my, to get out of my way. I thought we were friends. Goodness. And she kind of backs off. <laughs> and he's just immediately gonna, like, try to get a, dry, a ride home, right back to his apartment. Okay. Smart to his office so he can start smelting and making a face. <laughs> okay. All right, then now we'll move to more like epilogue-ish stuff. Um, I'm gonna start rolling that d4 again to see who goes first. What did I roll? That's a four. So that's Vivian first. Vivian, what what do you get up to, and what? happens with you over the next while. I think she gets that job at the Fortuna Nera. Mm -hmm. and she becomes well known for her singing and piano playing. And then she takes that money and she invests it in a boutique where she gets to design fashionable clothing. I would imagine with the absolute decimated staff whoever it is that takes over would actually rely on you quite a bit for um for help and aid as you're very reliable very skilled in more than just entertaining um so you are your pay is very uh comfortable and you are very much able to handle that sort of thing um the fortuna nera's reputation does drop a little bit um as the uh, <laughs> the staff disappears and the word gets out of what was going on in the background. Not that people didn't know, but like, you know, when it becomes public. But that also kind of adds to the mystique and the interest of people who come by. Just like, ooh, this used to be like an, an illegal place. So you definitely draw large, large crowds of people who love to hear you sing and play. Um, definitely the most popular act of the Fortuna Nera. I think she also keeps in touch with Sev and every now and then mm -hmm. throws out whatever hideous suit he's bought lately and brings him something different. Mm -hmm. And she also continues to be a pain in the butt for Detective Anderson just because. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Next is Sev. So after that night, he's going to have made a decent, but not perfect face. He's very much going to deliver that to Ava. I think the same night, like he's going to call her, get her mm -hmm. address, and then show up there that night at like four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We might RP this one a little bit. Uh, she answers the door in, like, a, a robe, basically. Hey. He, he can't be tired, but he definitely, like, looks exhausted. I, I like, imagine you're still spattered with elder brain goo in yes. the salmon suit. <laughs> it has not changed. She goes, got it. I got, I, I made it. I made your, I, I made the face. I can attach it right now if you want. Uh, oh. Okay, uh, come in. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm a mess. I just killed a godlike being. Um. Yeah, you're a mess. You okay? I am actually 100% okay. Um, I, not gonna lie, I was really cool. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. but I, yeah, it, I think we just got rid of a lot of crime in the city. That's great. Congratulations. I'm really happy, but I'm more happy that I have this for you. It holds up the platinum face. Got what exactly does this face look like? 
I mean, it looks very, very human, but mm-hmm. it, it very much, um, it's the most human face, I, I would say, that Warforge can get. Um, it has a moving mouth, it can express its cheeks, raise its eyebrows, but it can't, like, it can't do a lot of, like, intense emotion, or it can do intense emotions, but not minute details. Yes. Gotcha. Um, very pretty face. She turns it over, looks at it. Thank you. I know you didn't really want to. As I said, anything for you. It's, you know. After tonight, I don't have a lot of of told me back anymore. Can you say that one more time for me? He goes, after tonight, I don't feel like I have a lot of things holding me back. Uh, it's... Yeah. What was holding you back before? A dying, mainly. Um, the fear of hurting you by dying. The fear of hurting everyone by dying. Um, just not understanding of you as a person. So... I feel like I'm better at that now, and I feel like I'm I'm ready. Ready for what? Do you want to see a movie sometime, or play, or whatever's plot appropriate? Movies are a thing now, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Hey, well, I'll make I'll be making some more money, so I can definitely, and I'm I might be able to get us somewhere really nice. Once it opens back up. Uh, okay. Okay, cool. It's a, it's a date. Okay. You seem so very uncomfortable. Are you all right? Surprisingly, I've never done this before. I thought you did just a few days ago to me already. Or was that did, not a date? I, that was, but it was it was more of a like, oh, a date, and we should probably talk business about making your face. This is more a, I just genuinely want to spend extra time with you that has no other possible impact that, rather than just being next to each other. Mm-hmm. You did say, I know this is only a few hours ago, it was just yesterday, you did say some things to me that had some uh, pretty lengthy implications. Do you want to address that now? I meant everything I said. Point. I said I have nothing holding me back. I mean, all those lengthy implications. Mainly because we can't die. I, longevity means but I'm willing to make it the long run. If you are. I think so. You are a very sweet man. You're a very good person. Thanks. You're, You're a great person. You inspire me. Likewise. She comes up and kind of reaches her arm around you, like pulls you in. Sev's gonna match. What was that? It was nice. Sev, Sev's gonna match. Okay. Goes on around. He's like, "This is this is nice." Yeah. I hope you can get used to it. I will. Well. Maybe we'll talk about the face a little more. Okay. I should probably go. It's pretty late. I probably ruined your standing. Uh Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll be at the tin I'll be at the tin screw, hundred percent. Okay. Good night. Hey. Right. As soon as the door closes, Seb is like like singing in the rain happy down the street. Oh, Cute. All right, after having that conversation, now what are you going to do with your future? Long term, I think 
he and Ava date for a while. He hires on Delilah as um, as his co-detective. He doesn't really call her uh, an assistant. She takes some jobs with him, some jobs separate. Mm-hmm. Um, they kind of work together, but not work together. Um, but he kind of gives her a lot of agency, and he bought a second desk for her. That fits her size a little bit better. <laughs> um, not a uh, lot of space then, in that office for two desks, I'll be honest. <laughs> oh, no, he does eventually upgrade to one that has two rooms and a closet so that she can have her own area and he has a place to stand. Eventually, I imagine he calls in a favor to Vivian. He says, hey, Pat, could I, could you set some stuff up for me? The, uh, the Fortuna. Um, and I imagine he pops the question there. Vivian helping him hide a magic ring uh, in a bottle of or forged alcohol. Mm. Oh. Well, Ava does say yes. <laughs> I imagine they just live out until I don't know when Warforged would go out. Yeah, that is a question I have not faced yet. <laughs> are Warforged immortal? I think they are. Until I think Rust and Deterioration could take them out. But yeah, but with someone who knows how to fix them, they could last a while. Yeah. I'm actually, looking that up right now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say at the very least a long and fulfilling life long long time all right uh next is gene so for gene as he is now nicholas as he walks out of the the uh fortuna era he kind of pauses in front of one of the waiters that's just kind of standing there like uh, and he gets like an impish grin and he just like pokes him in the forehead until he tips over. <laughs> and he just kind of laughs. Uh-huh. And he goes and he walks out. Um, and he... He finds Addison Chad and takes his keys and... Um, just kind of gives him, you know, a stern Gene style look that kind of cows them. And um, as he gets into his sleek black fancy car that he probably took from someone through nefarious means. Um, he drives away and as the lights of the Fortuna and Era disappear behind him, he goes back to his his apartment, um, opens the door and steps into the into the darkness and he walks into his room and turns on a light. Um, and just kind of looks around at this, you know, it's very bare, as I've described before, there's not a whole lot there, it's all just very functional. And he, he crouches down and reaches underneath the, the well-made bed, and there's a little handle there that he pulls up, and inside there's, uh, there's a gun, and there's a large sack of gold that he picks up and he undoes his sword belt that had his holster and rapier attached to it and just lets it fall to the floor and he uh, walks over to his closet and opens it up and there's all of his fancy suits and ties that are all immaculate and he pushes them all to the side and he takes hold of another hidden compartment and opens it up and inside there are just simple plain clothes that are just covered in a ton of dust and he takes them out and he shakes them off and he looks at them and you know he just kind of mutters to himself it's been over a century and he puts them on and uh, he drops the goo covered clothes and puts them on and he uh he lays down for for the night um and when the i mean if it's 
ed going to show up in the evening before he leaves uh yes actually um when you wake up from your meditation she is uh sifting through your kitchen <laughs> are you hungry uh no um, what are you doing just looking I mean, you've been in here a million times. I like to, you know, just look around and get bored. Oh, I have something for you. As you pulls the amulet out. It's still covered in mud. It's from uh, your white knight friend. Hmm. I'm gonna reach out and take the um, muddy thing. And uh, from, you know, decades of habit, he's going to pull out a handkerchief and kind of like scrub it and then, you know, kind of. And he's going to put it in the pocket of his just regular kind of blue collar clothing and he's going to look at Edie and say, I don't think, I don't suppose I could convince you to leave with me, could I? And go where? Not here. Do what? Not this. Have just kind of a normal life where we're not constantly looking over our shoulders and killing people and selling drugs and maybe just be, you know, a couple of normal elves. I mean, I feel like normal elves kind of walk around in the trees and sing songs. That sounds really boring. I mean, I was more thinking maybe go out, spend this large sack of gold and buy like a big house and a lot of land and pay people to take care of it. And I guess I could, you know, also do some like ranching and stuff and you could be in a butcher shop to satisfy your sadistic tendencies. But just not have to I don't know, just not have to worry. You're really the only person that I have ever considered a real friend, despite your oddities, and... I don't know. I care about you. In your own, in our own little weird way. Hmm. <sighs> I mean, I can't promise I would be too entertained by that, honestly. But, I mean, I guess I figured out mostly how people are put together at this point, so it's not as interesting anymore. Well, let's be fair. The likelihood of you getting arrested without me around goes up exponentially. Yeah, maybe. Okay. All right. So in the morning, he's going to drive the car over and trade it out for something less flashy and more normal. And he's going to drive and just drive till he gets to some little itty bitty town way out in the middle of nowhere and buy a big old chunk of land and keep his promise to Edie and put her in charge of a butcher shop and you know, a couple hundred years later, when people come by, there's a big... There's a big sign that says Glass Farm and Ranch, and... There's several elves that are, um, running around taking care of the place, and... A somewhat older-looking elf will be sitting on the porch, rocking in a rocking chair, holding hands with some other beautiful elf that has never heard of his shady past. All she knows is the kind person in front of her, and he will not have thought of Shade City in decades. All right. Elhan, what about you? First thing he's obviously going to do is start keeping the promises he made, you know, obviously helping Vivian get that job with the Fraternera, 
Elhan's mm -hmm. actually gonna see if he can finagle it, since I'm assuming that um, Ayana's house is gonna be taken as evidence. I definitely anything into, into finagling, so Ayana's house is the one that Vivian ends up with, since it is definitely a very nicer upscale house. Mm -hmm. Set for sure. That's a thing. So yeah, definitely gonna do yeah use that to do that. Um, but after that, Elhan is gonna hopefully yeah Elhan's gonna take over as captain of the twelfth, mm -hmm. replacing Captain Alice. Yep. That and happens. he's gonna start the long and bloody war that is to clean up the twelfth, since there's probably a lot of you know gangs one trying to take over the territory forfeited by the. Uh, Regalier, as well as members of the Regalier fighting amongst each other. Uh, DL, eventually, Elhan will get the streets under control, so that way he can turn his attention to the commissioner and start working on that case, the biggest case of his life. So that case is actually, to some degree, handled for you. Perfect. Uh, Illithids are essentially a hive mind with the destruction of the Elder Brain the commissioner essentially becomes a husk of nothing. A body without direction. And not immediately. Elhan wants to work his way up there, but after several years of the twelfth, Elhan's gonna wanna become try to, you know, go for that commissioner position himself. You know, replace whoever ended up filling the commissioner. Um It would have been uh your IA head. I don't perfect. remember his name. But he's great. I have it written down somewhere. He's good. Yeah. He's cool. But yeah. And then, but in the meantime, Elhan is going to continue hiring on Sev for cases, you know. And despite Sev's protestations, is going to pay him a little bit more than the usual consultant fee. Um, because he knows that Delilah's going to start working there and Delilah needs money. So <laughs> he's going to start, you know. But then eventually, Elhan is going to start dating. Delilah, um, but he actually imagines that that doesn't end well, that Delilah is just too emotionally damaged after the everything that happened, that it doesn't end well, um, yeah. and Elhan is going to get back in contact with Tina from the beginning of the, um, beginning of the show, and mm -hmm. eventually propose to Tina and Tina not seeming the most intelligent person probably would accept, but it's apparent to everyone who knows Elhan that while he cares deeply for Tina, he doesn't he's not as happy as he could be. Um, he's gonna ask Vivian to sing at the wedding, hopefully use the you know, for Fortuna Nera as the setting for the wedding as well. But Elhan's life is gonna be filled mostly with work. Um eventually he will have a son that Elhan is going to hopefully raise in the traditions that he has. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is life as life is a slog that has its rewards. And all we can do is hope that we can help other people on their way. And Shade City, though uh, some of the more major problems have been removed, continues to be what it is. A challenge and a mire of problems and a little bit of, little bit of criminality. People take advantage of each other. And as much as can be done about it, progress can be made, progress can be lost. And we just continue on. Thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out with us for this wonderful little campaign. It's been a really good time. I've been thrown more than I ever have, and I've enjoyed it more than I ever have. Um, we are going to have our rehash the rolls on Wednesday next week. I'm going to drop the link into chat right now for the specific form. You can go ahead, ask any questions you want. If a certain cast member cannot be there that night, we will make sure to ask them and get the question, the answer, so we can let y'all know. Um, we love you guys very, very much, and we appreciate all your support and encouragement that you give us. 
I hope you have a wonderful night, and we'll see you around. Good night, everybody.